Hi, this is Brian Forrester, and today we're exploring the Temple of Hathor, or Hathor, in Egypt. The Temple of Hathor is one of the most well-preserved temples in all of Egypt. There are three temples to view in the complex. The Birthing Temple at the front, the Temple of Isis behind the main temple, and the main temple dedicated to Hathor. There's also a sacred pool that you can still explore off to the right hand side. The colors seen throughout the temples are original and amazingly vibrant considering the inside was once covered in soot from Bedouins and other desert people seeking asylum. And we'll see that shortly. Here you see some objects made out of hard stone, <coughs> excuse me, such as uh, granite and this one in particular is very strange because of the the cracking of the surfaces as if it had been hit by intense heat and we've seen this at other locations such as Karnak. The Bedouins and other people would use the temples as shelter lighting fires for cooking and warmth. Since the temple complex used to be covered halfway in desert sand as well, after it was abandoned, it was easy for the soot to accumulate at the top, and we'll see the beautiful job that they've done of cleaning these surfaces. To show the amount of soot that had to be cleaned, archaeologists chose strips of ceiling in each temple to leave covered in soot as a comparison um, as compared to what it looked like prior. The clearing of soot and all the sand bearing the temples was tedious work, obviously, that took years to complete. And just look at the size of these beautiful, massive pillars. And there you see the face of Hator. Each one of these faces has been defaced. When exactly that occurred um, seems to be unclear. The temple complex displays influences from Egyptian, Greek, and Roman rulers. There was also a Coptic Christian church on the premises near the birthing temple at one point. The main temple was built by Ptolemy XII and nearly completed by Queen Cleopatra VII around 54 to 20 BC. There is also evidence of temples and other structures that date back all the way to 2500 BC. And what's interesting here is you see that the lower sections are actually made of granite, and so that shows the possibility that uh, <clears throat> the temple is even older because most of the dynastic constructions that we see in Egypt are limestone or sandstone. Now if you look very carefully at the top, you'll see two of the famous Dendera light bulbs. And the question is, were they actual depictions of light bulbs, or is there a more pragmatic answer? That is unknown, but the most famous feature of the Dendera complex, or at least the reason why most people visit, is to see the quote unquote light bulbs. And the most famous of them are located in this underground room, which appears to have been a secret room, not open to the general public, but only for those of the highest level of initiation. So there you see one of the very famous Dendera light bulbs. Some people think it's a crook's tube. Other people simply think it's a snake inside of a, a lotus flower or something. But Obviously, these are thought by some to be depictions of actual light bulbs from the dynastic and possibly even pre-dynastic times.
And then in the center at the bottom, you see what is called a jet pillar. Some people think that that's some kind of electrical transformer. But because it's artwork, it's hard to know exactly uh, what they actually were, what it was that the artisans of ancient Egypt were trying to depict here. But as far as we can tell, they're not found in any other ancient structure. And here we see a strange looking being of some kind holding two knives. What that represents again is open to discussion. But these are some of the finest bas reliefs that you can see in all of ancient Egypt. And now we're going to the other rooms in this underground secret complex. Hathor is the Egyptian sky goddess of sexual love, fertility, music, and dancing. It is also said that she is the goddess of birth and motherhood. She is often depicted as the counterpart of Horus. In fact, Hathor translates to the house of Horus. And now we're coming back outside, or at least into the main temple complex. And what's amazing here is that this supposedly was recently uncovered and it is assumed that that is another temple complex underneath the main temple of Hathor. And now we're going upstairs to the top part of the Hathor temple. You see all of the beautiful hieroglyphics here. And there are two staircases. There's this one, which is some not really a spiral staircase, but a spiral staircase of sorts, going all the way to the next level. And then going back down, there is just a straight stairway that goes down. Not much sign of, <clears throat> excuse me, lost ancient high technology or anything like that here. That's the reason why we go to the Hathor complex is to show some of the most beautiful of the dynastic depictions. And this is also where there is one of the most famous um, astrological symbols in all of Egypt. You see the massive size of the stones on the left-hand side that make up the roof. And now we're going to go inside and see the astronomical, or sorry, astrological calendar. The zodiac is a planisphere or map of the stars on a plane projection, showing the 12 constellations of the zodiacal band forming 36 decans of 10 days each and the planets. The original is I believe in the Louvre, and it was taken away, some would say stolen by Napoleon. So this is actually a copy that is there now. Once again, you see the massive size of the uh, stones making up the roof. This is all basically sandstone construction, which is typical of the uh, dynastic Egyptians. Here again, some quite tight-fitting stones, no apparent use of mortar, but again, sandstone, especially in this case, is not a very hard material, not compared to granite or basalt. There you see the beautiful stars on the ceiling. This area clearly has been cleaned over the course of time, revealing the original paint, original colors. And then this straight staircase that I was talking about before that goes down to the next level. Once again, you can see some defacement of some of the human figures on the left and right hand side. And the heavy uh, wearing of the stairs from probably 2,000 plus years of people going up and down. And this is simply one part in about a 25 part series from our tour of April 2019. Many more to come.
So if you'd like to come with us on a future journey, we're going to Turkey in September of 2019. And then India in January of 2020. And Egypt in March of 2020. This is going to be very popular and will sell out very fast. And finally, our extension to explore lost ancient high technology examples in Israel. Thank you for watching, as always.